Okay, this is the Blind Sense Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Blind Mike. I'm your other host, Morris. And so hopefully, how are we doing <laughs> Mike, Mike is hopefully not too frustrated with me because we just tried to churn out a podcast really quick for you guys since there's a Kickstarter on and it didn't go well at all. My voice was super tinny. Um, and Mike said, And I echoed like a bitch. Yeah, so. you, dude, I almost had you record uh, an after the credits thing where it's like I consider myself, myself, myself to be the luckiest man, man, man on the face of the earth. <laughs> or, or. That'd be awesome, actually. <laughs> but uh, but just, just so you guys also know that if you've completely been missing it, one of the things we wanted to discuss this podcast was I'm putting things after when the credits are rolling, like asking you dumb questions to get you to email Mike or comment, which you should totally do both. Um, so do that. Because, yeah. yeah. But without further ado, I will do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> Done. Done. <laughs> and, um, I'm repeating everything I, you say. <laughs> but got caught up doing the repeat game. Mm, um, it's all good. But well, yeah, I'm used to the echo, so I have to keep going. Hey, hopefully that this setting works much better on the different mics that uh, we don't run into the same problem once we review this. But I'm yeah, still. I think you have to do this a third time. <laughs> 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 That'll be a tomorrow it's, project. It's like, oh out. yeah, no, we're going to bed. It's too way too late. And it's like, people, if you're looking at my desktop, you should be because I have the the screens up for you to see this time. Uh, it's after midnight. Like we listened to that last one. Oh man, we even had like two episodes. We just junked them. But um, <clears throat> my voice is also still garbage because uh, at work, one of my bosses had a cold and he passed it along to everybody else. So now. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm, much. I'm having my tea, trying to keep my voice from being any more garbage than it can. Mm. Uh, so, Dark Eye is what we want to talk about this time around. Yep. And Dark Eye's got a compendium Kickstarter going on that's that's now live. Yep, we're in our second day of the Kickstarter. It's already pretty close to 300% funded. So, so yeah, it's like, guys, if you want to jump on this one, that's part of why we're pushing to get this uh, video out. Like, it's it's funded. It's going to happen. It's something that's a translation of the German. Like, it's just a matter of time. Um, holy shit, Mike. Well, oh, this is the, the pleasures of doing it live. Um, it just went up again. So oh, we're it at, did? Yes, awesome. we're at fourteen thousand seven hundred fifty-three of their five thousand dollar goal. So two hundred more than what there was. Yep, we've got one hundred thirty-nine backers and might need more days to go. And huh. uh, we're hopefully getting this video out to you. I'm going to push to get it edited and uh, started uploading tonight, tomorrow, if I can, so that you guys have as much opportunity to pledge if you'd like. Um, I am pledged in at the $40 point, which gets you me all as well, digital. Anything other than PDFs does me no good. <laughs> well, I mean, we can get, like, if you go up to 90 you can get uh, stuff that's, like, uh, physical copies, uh, faux, or actually, no, it's 150 No, that's just the regular hardbacks. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the faux leather is the next. Faux leather is 150 leather. I love that for that and then 175 is your top uh, compendium. Which completely is leather. actual leather. So. Yeah. Now, something that I took a long time to realize that I should mention you guys um, in the first recording that we did, which is, you know, it's like uh, Babylon 5, how, like, the, the our, our mission failed, but it got better in the long run. Um, as soon or it's as like I, Groundhog Day. We just keep screwing it up and keep redoing it. Until we do it right and we get the girl, I could live with that. Yeah, me um, too. <laughs> Uh, so now I can't find it and, and scrolling through again, the, the, uh, great of being live. Yes. There's an armory that comes with this. I found the card oh, pack, but I'm not seeing, there's the armory 
booklet. Um, Adventuring Armory, I believe is what yep, it's called. that's all it says. Yeah. Peace, peace on Earth was all it said. <laughs> but it'll have new weapons and armor. It'll also have a lot of the old ones described in better detail. Yeah. Um, new new equipment, new new just about anything you can consider equipment. And if you're probably a, magic yeah. items, that I wouldn't be surprised if there was something like that in there as well. Yeah. If you're a talky guy like me, or you know, a wizardy person like Mike, and you're like, oh, armor, I don't know. It's like, no, there's actually a bunch of different stuff in there, like magical items, um, things that will help you, you know, with your provisions, uh, conversing with people, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's well, that's yeah, like the compendium. It, it seems at first blush that it's its uh, focus is combat. And to a certain extent, it is. Uh, but you also get a lot more interaction skills, mm -hmm. um, fate point uses, weapon breakage, hit locations or things that they have here that, you know, they're adding. Yeah, a lot of just well, a lot of the. Just extra stuff they couldn't fit in the core rulebook for combat and skills and stuff. Mm -hmm. Probably stuff they like, hey, maybe we should add this later, you know, kind of thing. It's a slap look. It's, I'll, you know, roll out stuff that you, hey, I think we're missing this. Oh, it's, you know, maybe it's in this book. It's mm -hmm. one of those type of things. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I had that was a kind of a, a light criticism, because I really do appreciate uh, Dark Eye, but like one of the stretch mm -hmm. goals we have here. So we've got, uh, the digital set of the compendium, uh, an armory PDF. Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. And all this. And then you get into add-ons. Um, add-ons, they make it super easy on this. If you want to get, say, a physical copy of something, once it, it manages to get made, just tack it on afterward. Um, in case you guys didn't glance at two, uh, more people like Mike who can't see it. Uh, this is a shorter campaign. It's only going to run for 19 days, like we said. 21 days. Well, yeah. 19 days now. 19 days now. It was three now. weeks of joy. Yeah. The, the other ones three are like... 11 hours or something like that. Four yeah. weeks, I think we said, is what we think a normal Kickstarter campaign 28, 30 right? days, something like that normally. Yeah. I think was the last one. was. A, I think was 28 days was the last one. So you can probably get your compendium by Christmas if you hurry up and get pledged on. But... Um, uh, it's you, the, the last, well, the PDFs anyways. Yeah, I think they said that, well, yes, the the physical copies, I think they said weren't going to be out until like May or something. Cause they and, had a, and that's the they very had a last problem. Time. Well, the reason I should also say, guys, that they said that is they said they had a problem with guys um, answering the surveys. So they couldn't get it out. Finish your surveys, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And do your due diligence. Get your survey done because the rest of us got away. Fill out your stuff. Yep. Well, there also could have been just miscommunications in places. It yeah. might not be, you know. <laughs> then somebody, oh, exactly. I forgot I pledged on that, you know. Yeah. But um, deluxe character sheet, that was what I was going to gripe about, where it's like, mm -hmm. okay, that's grand, but the character sheet, like, let me pull it up for you guys to show you. Um, never mind the beautiful woman on Witch's Dance, which... <laughs> but the Dark Eye character sheet... <laughs> Um, so you've got your first sheet has your personal data, advantages, disadvantages, all the things that build your character, life points, dodge, all that stuff, and your stats. Um, Basic stats are in the yep, front page. You go to the second sheet, and that's got your more in-depth game stats, so like your body control, your riding ability, nature skills, knowledge skills, craft skills, all that sort of stuff, and attribute modifiers. Also, you know, I think languages that you know or scripts that you can read, which actually, you know, they were important in Pathfinder, but they're also, like, variants in here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get to the combat part of the character sheet, which has what weapons do you have on you, what special abilities do you have, all that sort of thing. So already we're up past more okay. sheets than you <clears throat> probably have uh, doing, like, D&D or Pathfinder. Then we're not done. You've got a belonging sheet. So you get actually get a sheet to yourself about belongings. Well, just for equipment. And any animal companion you might have or mount. Um, and the part that Doug splooges all over himself about that you get ducats, silver thalers, haulers, kreutzers, gems, jewelry, and other items that might count for money. So, you know. 
I guess You're if, we're, if we're trading alfalfa pellets among the animal folk, that's <laughs> <laughs> we uh, need to know how much those alfalfa pellets are worth. So I I remember uh, two guys talking in their own podcast that they were like, man. I want the distinction between lumber and wood in my game. You know, like that kind of detail. Yeah, dark eyes hooking you up, you you freaks. <laughs> pretty. Yeah, they're pretty detailed with a lot of the stuff, which is kind of nice. But then, unless you don't enjoy that type of system. You yeah. Know, but... Well, I mean, like I I appreciate the attention to detail, but I also appreciate the ability to gloss over it whenever it's not important. You know. Yeah. But then we get to the fourth sheet, which if you're a spellcaster, you'll probably want spells and rituals. But wait, we're not done. Spells, rituals, and cantrips are only part of what you could get. Yeah, you that's could, only for your mages. You could get a, a blessed one or other person who uses liturgical chants, which I believe elves do that, don't they? Use oh, the uh, no, elves are magic, like uh, wizardy magic. So Okay, but you you get liturgical chants and ceremonies for your blessed one types, and then you get your blessed special abilities and other blessings. So, Yeah, depending on what your god you're worshiping, yeah. you get different stuff. You basically tack that on at the end there. It, it's something you like. you got to take that first level to have all the, the you know, magic ability and the blessed one stuff so i don't think you can combine it but conceivably if you came up with some really really twink story for why you learned magic late in life <laughs> actually they, uh i saw at one point where you can actually you can't take magic late in life but you can take because you can come get a calling from a god anytime if you think about it mm. so you you have to be born with actual with uh, mage abilities but you can actually transition into being a, oh, no, I was a blacksmith, and now I'm a, you know, a priest of, you know, the god of blacksmiths or something. Mm. You can actually do that. It's just very rare, because that's a lot of points to put into building that type of character. Yeah. By the way, people, this space system, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... Doug had put it, it's the Mensa test of character sheets. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I pretty, missed that. So <laughs> pretty comprehensive. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's... Uh, I, which means I hate to see what the bigger character sheet is, honestly. Mm. But yeah, pledges and add-ons, and really, I mean, like, we've already had stuff lock uh, unlock here, so let's take a look at some of the stretch goals here. So, um, f to start off, uh, they funded it. Yes, of course. Now we've got compendium card pack and general special abilities. So you have a PDF and print version of this available that uh, basically gives you... I think you, you have to thing. actually add the print version in a, yes. as an add-on once yes. it's on or get the, get the pledge point that has all the print rewards. Right, but yeah. That uh, is something that basically gives you a cheat sheet for your character that is like, oh, I've got these special abilities, so I'll just have this card out. So you don't have to keep looking it up in a book. Yep. Then there's the one that... Which we're handing it somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Then there's the one that I get super excited about, which is uh, One Death in Grandor, or Grangor, sorry, um, which is the 64-page adventure. adventure that they're just going to translate as an extra. Um, so the PDF of that is already unlocked, as we'll see here in a minute when we go further down. The physical copy is still locked, but if you get your pledges in now, it'll probably, you know, turn the tide. Um, I'm just excited because it's like, oh, this is a noir-style one. And, like, that's what I'm all about is detective film noir. noir. Film yeah, noir detective. The, like... So, like I've been saying to Mike, is like, I don't know. Like, we, we did uh, Goblin more or less, and I really enjoyed... DMing that because like I could be all the different characters and that gives me the interaction stuff that I like but I also you know I don't know depending on what the blur blurb on the back of this one says I might want to do it like gumshoe style and ha have Mike have to lead this one I don't know we can I don't care rock. I do it it's up to you guys we can rock paper scissors for that one if it seems super good I don't know but you know, uh, it also appeals to me that you won't do it. I'll let you play because I'm pretty set on doing theater nights when I get all of it. But yeah, mm. 
but it also appeals to me to to being like underworld guys if those are in there that's why i kind of want to get a taste for what's gonna be in there right um deluxe character sheet i just griped about then we've got the adventurian herald uh, which that is the in-game world. Uh, it's paper it's like easing. A, <laughs> yeah, it's like a like a like you know you know newsboys used to you know throw out ah, extra hey, extra you, know, about it, yep. you know kind of thing where it's, you know it's it's the so the world of Adventuria um, maybe even more so than like Pathfinder is an evolving world. That they come up with. Oh, much canon. more than Pathfinder. Yeah. They they come up with the canon. This is what's changing, and you'll find out about that in the heralds. And something that's cool that uh, we as English speakers kind of feel left out, because um, as Mike and I were discussing, you know, in our failed uh, attempt at this podcast, uh, the the Germans are a year ahead of us at a minimum, <laughs> so. They About a year, I think. Kind because, of like, yeah. Their version of the Pathfinder Society, they can submit is like, okay, this was the outcome of our campaign here, and then if enough of them uh, get a similar outcome, the creators of the game will go, okay, well, here's what canonically happened after that. So your characters can theoretically have an effect on the world. So that's kind of cool. Which is kind of neat, yeah. Except, like I said, the American audience is way behind. Yeah. So you got. So they're a year ahead of us. You, you got to pledge, guys, so we can get caught up. Because <laughs> I, I know they want to try to get closer to you know the release schedule, maybe be a few months behind. Yeah, that, I could, that's not too there's bad. There's always going to be a bit of lag, but yeah, if we can get uh, it happening frequently enough, you know, they might actually include us. Let us play in oh. their, their reindeer games. If they get if they get a bigger audience in the states, I'm pretty sure that will start coming quicker. Um, I really like this game to take off. I, it's, it's a really good system. Why it's yeah. very complicated, but it's a great system. And I, as I'm always, I'm always throwing this out here just to kind of d- defend the Pathfinder. It's like it's not. No, guys, we're not upset with you. Like we're not oh, doing this because we're like this is a better system. No, like we just we enjoy this too. So like, <laughs> like we're See, not. One of the strong things I like about Pathfinder is their adventure paths. They are very well done. So here's the thing that, like, with um, uh, Goblin, more or less, and actually this is probably a good place to weave it in, uh, with, like, so we started out, to pull this up for you guys again, Mm -hmm. we started with Witch's Dance, uh, which you gaze at that beautiful redhead witch on the cover, and I can't imagine why that would have been the first one I gravitate towards. (laughs) But like the, uh, like seeing the color red, you're like her, bull. her and her toad, and she's showing a lot of a leg because she's some sort of variant of Beauty of the Night, I think. Um, but that was, you know, I I wanted to play this game, and like I um I uh, had read the blurb on back where you've got evil warlock using cunning treachery basically takes over this coven unfortunately the redhead you see in the cover is not one of the characters because that would give it away Um, part of this game is figuring out uh, at the very onset uh, who the witches really are and that was something that i i played with a little bit in the uh when you guys first started out with this now this was my first you know no training wheels uh, DMing, so in some ways it didn't go as smoothly as it could have. Um, another issue that we ran into this one that kind of made me super nervous was that this has more or less a timer on it. The big bad in this one uh, is putting a, a ceremony together. So if he can get his ceremony done by the time you get uh, to the end of the game are ready to face him mm-hmm. he could be way much more powerful than you and uh to not give too much away but he has the ability to manipulate people and that can get really nasty if he has a bunch of meat shields in between you and him so yeah it went okay there were some things I think it went well. 
Uh, plot armor. Remember that? That's something we should talk yeah. about with with. Also, uh, also, the the witch's specific is the daughter of, of the earth. Yes, that's um, the touch. Okay, <clears throat> but um, yeah, the the one uh, creature that we came up against, we thought could not be damaged except for by magical weapons. Turns right. out that was a bit of a misprint. So yeah. that's one of the legitimate cr criticisms uh, towards Ulysses is that, the, hey, nobody's perfect, but at some point there are some errors and they have to get patched At least out. they cor uh, corrected it in the next book. So, yes. yeah. We know now. And because of that, I gave Mike closure, which, you know... That's a, that's a thing to do if you're a DM. If it's in your purview that, like, oh, well, this this guy would be pissed and want revenge, like, um, that would be a, a thing to consider. Yeah, I really wanted that guy dead. <laughs> really, really, really badly. Because I was going to come back and murder him when I got more powerful. Yeah. 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 Then, uh, then I'm more like, you know what? You screwed up his plans. He's going to come for you. You don't even have to look. Um, then we went on to Goblin, more or less. Um, and that one uh, is, you know, the the they both kind of were detective. I kind of keep be in this rut that yeah, I'm. They're both kind of. I notice they do a lot of those type of adventures, which is cool, because that's normally it's oh fight, 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 fight all the time, and I'm yeah. kind of enjoying the like you actually. Tank. That's a good point, Mike. I hadn't really thought of that. It's like it's not that same. You slaughter every buddy from point A to point B, like. We ended up doing a lot of talking in that. Um, well, there, there doesn't seem to be near as many monsters in the system yeah. as, say, in Pathfinder. Combat works so well. that's one of the reasons you don't fight as much. Yeah, p combat works much differently. Uh, the enemies are much more humanized, I find. Mm -hmm. and like In some ways they are, at least. Yeah, well. I mean, like, so... Uh, the goblin that they have pictured on this is kind of a more tribal one, and he like like the witch, he does exist, but you don't really encounter that type of goblin in the story. They're much more uh, mundane, um, day to day people. Mm -hmm. And in in this setting, uh, you know, we had uh, Demon Eric join us for this one. So he got to be a player instead of just having to to be a GM for us all the time. We actually did we we didn't describe who everybody was playing, did we? No, we not this go around. Run that so. down really quick, but yeah. So we've got uh, Doug as the Blessed One Paladin, and of Raja. Yeah, uh, we've got my character is uh, Navise. Basically, I went for like kind of almost like an Inuit who worships with the wolf gods, and uh, he's, wolf, yes. he's a bit of a storyteller by the campfire and a healer. So he's a little bit different from my usual fast talker character. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got Kay. Kay's elf who is, has no set identity and just takes a bunch of different aliases and is an assassin who's a strictly by the by the book for business kind of guy no nonsense mm -hmm. and then you've got your wizard mike which is uh what kind of spellcaster are you i am a white mage so i'm kind of a battle mage -ish. but i'm also very foppish so i i thought and you know i'm haughty i talk like this <laughs> so so I, I try not to get upset at Mike's character for talking like that because he is playing a character, but come on, man. <laughs> I know, I just think it was something. I, I play it, off it, of that it, a little the bit. advantages I took, so. So there was this, um, actually in the first one, the one of the tavern owners he like has three daughters, and there was a nerdy one that, that Mike's character was trying to hit on, and I'm like, eh, no, not her. But there there's one that will come up later, and for the last... Uh, section there's uh that i have planned for my run till i switch it over to mike being our gm i was going to do erivor's doom for my big finale and uh that one has it's a good one uh, for a big finale because that's one of the major events that happened in the last season of the whatever yeah, and that's that one's got a, a a very prominent and intelligent geologist chick in there that i think mike's character would really like her 
Um, cause she, she seems like a really interesting, nice character. And, uh, yeah, you, you know, just, just wait, you'll get yours. Just wait. <laughs> you know, and I, I don't talk like that all the time. Just when I'm trying to piss somebody off. Honestly. Yeah, more or but, less. Uh, well, it, it works. Cause I immediately when it's like, oh, should I target him with the next attack? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm hoping for. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm I trying guess. to basically, you know, get into the combat, especially when it comes to those points. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm trying to spread it out and be even on everybody, even handed. But I'll I'll tell you, another thing that went well um, in Goblin, more or less, that I'm I'm pleased about was, so I screwed up and I lost my my character sheet. I left it at home, saved on my computer, and I didn't bring a <laughs> yeah. digital copy with me. That was kind of Oopsies. yeah, but. <laughs> Uh, it worked out, though, not it, knowing you really I stats. really wanted to focus on everybody else anyway. And the only thing, oh, I, yeah. the only thing that we missed Especially out on... Especially with Eric being here, so... You know, the only thing I really missed out on, because like, I didn't even know whether my character would be necessary with an extra player this time. Um, mm -hmm. And he mostly hung back and helped whenever the mob got too out of control. He whacked a guy on the head. That's basically what he did. Um, cause there were only really the two major combats that we had. Um, well, we had, well, no, well besides two, the one extra one you threw in. There yeah. were two major combats and yeah, there was the one extra one, but that was just resolving the first game. Um, in any case, uh, it, it, you know, it went well. The one thing I would have liked to have worked in is, uh, since you take the advantages and disadvantages of the character, one of the things I had, I was... Uh, thinking, as I told Mike, of one of the, one of the things from Star Trek V that was actually good was Doctor McCoy when he's uh, talking to himself at the the beginning of the movie with the binoculars, watching Kirk climb the cliff face. It's like, God damn, reckless. Got to watch it, otherwise I'm going to end up talking to myself. <laughs> it's like that was a, a quirk that I was going to work into the character that I had on my sheet and I forgot about when we went to play, but we'll, yeah. we'll get it yeah. in there later. But yeah, it was easier to bullshit my way through the combats than I thought it would be having the general idea of what I had yeah. built. Um, so yeah, well, you took something that was close and you did what you had with it. So but, yeah. Uh, yeah, and like, like, uh, Doug did his thing. He, w he ball up some guys pretty good. K's assassin, um, is, was a much more useful member of the team than I initially thought. Because I thought, you know, well, uh, we were also in a city where he basically shines for that sort of thing mm -hmm. too. So that really didn't. So hurt like you. he actually on some of the the more infiltration the, stealthy stealthy stuff that we had. He Festum climbed, was the city, wasn't it? Yep, Festum. Okay. My he, thought. he was climbing up on rooftops and doing reconnaissance for us which is something that we kind of wouldn't really dare to do in another uh, setting like Pathfinder. Well, Mike was saying, unless... Just the, we never play... Nobody ever plays a rogue in Pathfinder, if you've noticed. You're the closest thing, in, and you're a bard, so in you're the face, group, so you don't yes. do a lot of that stuff. Well, it's just because I ended up doing bards because I like the persuasion, which you could do with a rogue, but then I also get spell casting progression. And... Uh, they things. actually have a rogue archetype that gets spellcasting. Yeah, progression. well, I remember that one time I did do a uh, spell thief, but I'm just so used to the way that the bard loadout works. Mm -hmm. But that neither being here nor there. No, Kay's dude really contributes, and like we were, we had said before, um, even in the first adventure, he's a beast in combat we, too. So yeah, well, like in the first adventure, we noticed that hey, everybody's contributing which feels really nice because I'm used to being a party face and having to do all the talking. But no, if, if I fail a check or somebody else fails a check in, in this setting, you know, there's different ways to get the information that everybody can help. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very, it's very plug and play kind of system where, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you can figure out a reason to use this instead of, you know, whatever other skill that you think you you know, that the DM thinks you need, you can basically use that. Yeah, within all reasonable limits. And, uh, you know, Kay, his guy ended up taking down uh, the big bad with you at the end. Mm -hmm. um, Doug's uh, attack glanced off his armor, which can happen in this setting is something we kept forgetting at the beginning. 
it's like they have armor, which reduces damage, as well as they get and they a, have a, a defense roll. They can do a, either a parry or a dodge. You yeah. Know? But, uh, Which basically negates the attack if you can dodge well, or parry it. So. Actually, that's something I forgot to mention uh, in our, our other attempt at this, was that um, I our team typically does really well in combats, and I um, didn't really realize until after we had gotten past the uh, final battle so that I accidentally made them a little beefier than they're supposed to be. The, the uh, one set of leaders was supposed to just be henchmen level and have no real armor and the other guys were supposed to be slightly less competent than them i beefed them up just a little bit that that i ended up using uh guard stats for the leaders which and, is fine because we're like i said we're pretty beasty in well, combat anyway, so, so then tying it back again to the compendium one of the things that i was worried about that this should help with is I was worried that we would end up with very stale combat. Because, when enemy number two, please step up. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Because like video games make that mistake all the time. It's like you're gonna send the same enemy at you in waves and waves and waves, and eventually <laughs> it loses its charm and gets boring. Um, yeah, I get so, tired hitting all these random encounters with you know nibble wolves <laughs> from Final <laughs> Fantasy Seven. I know, right? For example, but yeah. Uh, the memories. But yeah, it it, it wears on you after a while. So uh, I was trying to spice it up. Now, Kay took out the big bad with... with uh, you had Crossbow. hit him with a spell. He got You got like quality level three, I think we had determined. Fulminate. I might have actually had three or four. Because I, I think I actually... I criticaled on the spell, so I got to roll an extra d6. So I think I actually had four, now that I think about but it. But by the time Mike got to him, it was like, glass jaw. Okay, I'm backing off. I'm backing off. Because, <laughs> like, I had him come out to the front like an idiot and announce that he was there uh, to try and intimidate everybody, and that just completely Oh, backfired. yeah, that's what I hit him with a spell, and I hurt him really bad, and he backed out the door, mm. and then Kay saw him through the door with the crossbow Kay, bolt. Kay shot him before he could actually get his turn to leave. And, uh, he went unconscious, and his henchmen drug him out. Drug him out but the door. Yeah. Here's the problem: the, the the crossbow bolt that Kay shot him with was poisoned. So after he was already uh, you know, wounded unconscious, the poison took effect. <laughs> so yeah. unless I was gonna make one of his henchmen miraculously be a healer, no, he's done. <laughs> well. He deserved it. Old but there bastard. was there was another character in there. Again, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, so I won't say what was up with that. But uh, that unique, I had um, throw some dirt uh, in the eyes of Eric's uh, Thor Whaler. And he actually made a dodge check on that because I'm like, okay, that's, you know, she's making a, a, a basically an unarmed attack. He managed to dodge and it's like, hey, that's the first dodge I got all night. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty happy about it too. So yeah, that that went well. His, well. his character is big and beefy and not very dexterous, so you know he was pretty mm -hmm. happy with that. But you know, this would give more opportunities to do little incidental things like that. I would hope. Mm -hmm. um, well, this if you build your character, you can build your characters in the system to be a tank in certain areas. But like not like Pathfinder, you can't. I can beef everything up. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I could get a really ridiculous sagacity, which is what mages use for their casting their spells mostly. But you know, yeah, it's yeah. You, like you're not going to max out a bunch of abilities. The character sheets again are like they're really well organized in that they they do take the. Um, sagacity, intelligence, charisma, all that, and put them at the top of all relevant sheets, which is handy. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, like I just, I, I criticize the new sheet because it's like, don't we already have enough to try and keep track of? <laughs> hey, you get it for free. You might as well take a look at it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yes. Like, well, it'll, it'll, it'll yeah, unlock. Well, well, well like, like you'd said earlier, you don't have to implement it if you don't want to, but you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
so yeah, do you guys. Uh, maybe they organized it better so you you know takes up the same amount of sheets, but you got more room for things. You know, you never know. Yeah, like guys. But from you, what I understand, uh, I think it's a couple more pages on it. Yeah, if you pledge on this, we can still get a physical event at Venturian Herald. Yeah, um, you can get print a copy the of the uh, Death and Grangor, all that, um, and then a compendium card pack number two of special abilities, PDF and print. So that could still be unlocked. Um, but yeah, this basically, you know, it's a gimme. It's going to happen. <laughs> so if you catch yeah, it in nice, time. There's some nice stuff in this Kickstarter. They're really good. And like I said, they add extra pledge. Like you can pledge and get a core cool rulebook. Even. Yep. So, so like say you want to just get the, like the hit zone dice that Mike and I were discussing. Um, you can just bucks. Oh, get that. On. Yep. Um, I don't know how it works. I don't begin to know how it works. The compendium's probably going to explain it, but it's... Yeah, it's, I'm interested to see how they do it. If it's, if it's something that really works pretty well, I might actually pick up the dice, even though I'll never be able to read them just for shits and giggles. Well, they're, but, yeah. more, they're more or less D20s, but like the thing I don't understand is like why do you need hit zones? Aren't you targeting something? Um, I don't know. Well, normally when you swing at something, you just swing and you hope you hit something and they don't exactly. <coughs> you could use the hit zone dice to go, ah, oh, you swung and you, you, you hit them and you hit them right in the, you know, I don't yeah, know, the left breast or the right thigh or something. It's a little ridiculous like, to me because it's like he's not like, doing a perfect 360 spin in the circles like, hit one of these magical items, ah, you know, like it doesn't work like that. No, but you know what I mean. Well, it's like, um, and again, I I immediately am being critical of this, which maybe is not fair, but I'm like, if it's maybe a dragon... Maybe it's targeting you and not them, though. So, I, you know, if a dragon bites your hand off or that's, whatever. That's a point. That's a point. I was thinking more like you're attacking the dragon's snout. You aren't going to magically end up, uh, you know, around his butthole and attack that. Like, that's not how it works. <laughs> well, it's it might be it's like, okay, this this zone is already weak, so you try to target that thing or something. You know, something... I don't know. Okay. I, I just I just don't know how it works. It's just, we're going to have to wait and see, is basically... Yeah. Now, one of the things that was odd that we were discussing is you said there was something like there was a baker or something? Was an architect? Oh, pastry was... chef. Pastry chef? <laughs> yep, that's one of the prof new professions in the, in the book. So, like, they do a good job in Dark Eye of making it, you know real world in that regard but that's so bizarre it's like i'm a pastry chef know, adventurer it's, 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 it is very bizarre but it's also kind of so, neat because they actually took the time to think about hey what kind of idiots get into adventure i, I, <laughs> you know I, mean? I was in town and the bandits were coming through and they ruined the 47th souffle that i was working on that day and that tore it that was the final straw so i became an adventurer and murdered them all See, I think it's more like, okay, you know, the army came through and burned down my town and my, and I'm the, you know, one of the few people left, blah, blah, blah. Now we have to survive, you know, one of that type of thing is what I'm thinking about. So I, I was a common pastry chef until I lost my, you know, my, my business, my town. And now I'm trying to make sense out of it. I prefer my absurdist rap. <laughs> well, I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> You can pretty much spin it however you want to. That's the great part. <laughs> but uh, yeah, also they've got a link here on uh, the Kickstarter to uh, Kickstarter to uh, Orkin Splatter TV, uh, which you guys can also find up here on the YouTube's. Uh, yeah, they do they a do. lot of videos. Uh, they do a lot of English videos in there too. You just got to look for the dark eye because mm. that is the English version. I yep. cannot pronounce the German version, which is DSA is the initials for it. But yeah, jeez, uh, I can't remember on the spot. Darsten like, Schmarker, the, Schmarker, the, Schmarker. I don't the, know. The, Sorry, guys, I didn't mean to be. Uh, uh yeah. The Schwarzenglas. Yeah, I can't pronounce that. Well, well, it was something like that. The Schwarzenglas. It's, it's actually some. The Schwarz, sort of, it's the Schwarzen something. Something you know, glass eyes or something like that to the effect. You know. uh, yeah. If you guys, or I highly doubt it, but if any European people happen upon this video, it is Euro-friendly shipping, as well as U.S.-friendly. So, uh, if you 
happen to be so across EU friendly, yeah. Yeah, if you're across the pond from the states, I don't know why you're watching this video, but we appreciate it. Please subscribe. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Please subscribe and tell us what else you'd like to see. <laughs> but yeah, and then they've got risks and challenges like they always have to say on Kickstarter, but it's like They've successfully funded how many projects? Now? Five. This is the sixth one they've done. Yeah, so... But, I th uh, yeah. I think it's a pretty sure bet. They have a super long uh, guarantee date on this one that, like, you're going to get the the uh, first compendium PDF right away once it's funded, but... Which I think we got ours, like, ten days after it was funded, something mm. like that. I think our, our last one we did, which was the Warring Kingdoms, great also, by the way. Yeah. Yep. But they aren't going to guarantee that you get any physical copies until, like, May of next year. And the reason for that is that, you know, people fill out their free well, like, uh, how Like, now people are starting to get the Warring Kingdoms book now. And it's been yeah. two and a half months. Um, and that's English people, or, like, United States, because they're quicker. EU, they say, might be a couple more months even before they get their stuff. Because mm -hmm. for, well, from what I understand, shipping to other countries is a massive pain in the behind. Because it costs so much more money and blah, blah, blah. It just, it's yeah, just, and... Cir it sounds like a three-ring circus is what it sounds like. Dude, honestly. just think about how exchange rates are fluid with individual economies. Like, that's, oh man, the headache. Mm -hmm. The headache. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, also you guys, if you're looking for physical copies of the stuff, uh, you can find it on the Ulysses uh, North America website. Um, you can also get, oh, also you can get physical copies from Paizo too, if you, mm -hmm. uh, as far as I know, they're still there. I, yeah, I would, I would think so. Um, and then RPG drive through, you can get the PDF drive copies. Through. Drive through. Drive through. I keep doing that. Yeah, I, I want to. I want <laughs> to drive through second. Uh, drive through RPG. You can get the uh, the PDF copies of everything. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you buy the English version. <laughs> also, I, look for the Dark Eye. Isn't it? It'll, it'll be the Dark yeah. Eye. Ulysses Spila. Blah, yep. blah, blah. Ulysses, North they America, Dark Eye. Yeah. Version, just German. Um, but like Goblin, more or less. Now, there's a lot more homework that you're going to have to do on this than, say, a Pathfinder adventure that you know holds your hand. Right. But uh, 449 right now uh, for Goblin, more or less, the last thing that we played, it lasted us. You know, uh, we didn't want to kill sessions. ourselves, so we did two sessions. Two different um, Erevor's Doom, only 10 bucks. You know, like. It, I, I, I don't know why it's so cheap, but it's so cheap. <laughs> it's just, yeah, why not? Um, well, five bucks, it's, what, 13 page adventure? Yeah, more or less. So, eh. And there's a lot of stuff crammed in that 13 pages, too. It's not yeah. like... Yeah, well, like I say, that you got to do your homework. You got to unpack this stuff and figure out how it works. And one of the things that confused the crap out of me uh, that we had discussed before was there's they'll have facts in here for the these sort of intrigue things where you're researching, and you mm -hmm. can talk to different townsfolk, and they'll have some statement about uh, something you're looking for information on, of a plus or a minus next to it, or some or both. both. And it's whether or not that statement is true, you know, so some are mixed bag. And like some are, yeah, some are partially true. You got to kind of figure out and like, uh, and particularly Goblin more or less, I was freaking out because there was so much information to be discovered. Um, mm -hmm. I was worried about like, how are they going to find all this? Who knows what? And really there was one really important character that she could be like legendarily important but they they openly say in the book text is like whether or not she is this character is unclear and it's not really important like the, just focus on the fact that she is very important and you can't kill her off because um, you'll have like your pawns and these that can easily be killed off and they don't really matter other than just for this story 
You've got your knights who are very vitally important to the story, but can still die. And then you've got your queen uh, characters who, like, are important to, like... Massively they, important characters for the entire... These are, for the entire... The whole entire decontent. Yeah, like, basically. these people show up in the Herald, so you can't just kill them willy-nilly. You these can, these but, characters only die in special events. Yeah. Well, I mean, for your game, you can do it however you want. Yeah, but yeah, it w- it was a doppelganger the whole time. You know, whatever works for you. But <laughs> well, yeah, you, like I said, you can you can change the world however you see fit yourself. So it's you know, but that goes with any game anybody plays. Mm. Another thing you guys uh, might want to check out if you if you don't have people to game with yet, but you want to look at this, uh, Vampire of Havana is actually a solo adventure. Um, let me go back over to the page. Yeah, it's ten bucks. So you can for ten bucks get a solo adventure that it kind of um it takes place within Havana, of course. But it's uh got a kind of choose your own adventure style. Mm-hmm. Um you have a generic non named thiefy character that you can just play as that they have already generated, or you can build your own if that's your thing. And then, uh, like the one I have open here, you can see there's actually hyperlinks within the PDF. So it's like you just read, this is where I'm at, at, starting with out of breath, and then you just turn the page. And it's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure, uh, but the PDF is constructed It'll so... It'll ask you to make checks in certain areas, yep. so... And it's so maze-like, it's like, okay, so I don't really know where to turn that I can cheat until I look... So if you just follow it through, you can play with you, you know, play with yourself. I'll say the <laughs> dumb thing, or as, as like uh, Mike and I did one night, is like I just narrated it off for him, and like okay, then we go to this page for this result, whether or not he made his checks. He had his dice well, roller. I survived, so it was good. <laughs> yeah. So all in all, I mean, like, what did you think of that one, Mike? Like, I actually really liked that one. Honestly, it was a decent adventure. Well, for a choose-your-own thing, it worked out pretty well, I thought. My, my big issue with it is once we got to the end of it, I'm like, oh, man, this needs a sequel. Because, like, he leaves it specifically open. But is mm-hmm. one coming? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Because I also heard somewhere coming down the pike will be a bunch of new adventures. So, mm-hmm. obviously, it's not in this Kickstarter as far as we know. At least they haven't unlocked anything yet. Yeah. But I understand there's a, supposed to be one of the next things coming up is more adventures. So that'll be cool. And hopefully they get more of uh, that sort of thing. Because I really like that. You know, it's nice to be able to, hey, I can play myself without, you know. Yep. Because sometimes you just can't get people together all at the same time. And, like, mm-hmm. the, that's one thing that this system really has going for it, even with, uh, like, the card game version, is that it's very easy to have people come in and drop out as need be. Um, so another thing just for you guys' consideration, uh, is Hero Forge has custom miniatures, as you can see here, the, the generic female, have this open. Um, so if you're looking to get minis, typically we do not mess with that, but this is something that I wanted to make our crew aware of. You can pick from different genres. Um, different races. So let's say you want a, a female zombie. That's in there. That's a thing you can do. Let's say uh, you want a female zombie with a different base that uh, maybe she's gone to a tavern for no reason. Sure, we'll put a wood in there. Uh, let's say she needs a mount. So she could drive a motorcycle or why does she just take a warg to the bar? Because, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> hey, makes as much sense as her being in a bar. Or uh, praise the sun amid your warg. Oh, that's uh, this is something Mike and I had talked about that I thought we should throw in again. Uh, yeah, you guys are looking for nice stuff. If you're looking for custom miniatures... I think it's a bit pricey from what I remember, but eh, yeah, still, like I custom don't... miniatures, you can't really beat it. It looks really easy to put something together modularly for whatever you're thinking, but uh, yeah, I just I have not signed up to figure out how much it costs. So I'm thinking if I'm going to pay for custom, it's probably not going to come cheap. I'm trying to think, there was another thing that I thought I might shout out to as well. 
um, that I saw on drive through and that's there is an actual uh, character generator for the dark guy. In oh there. yes, I forgot. Let me see if I can find it for them. I cannot remember. It's in, it's in the adventure adventure scriptorium, which we probably also ought to mention that. But yeah, it's it's in beta version now too, and it's and it's a pay what you want kind of thing. I don't know how well it works because I have not yet bought it myself, although I've been contemplating for the last week or so. So I'm probably actually going to pick it up and see how it works. Okay, guys, we found it super easy and didn't waste like 15 minutes trying to get the freaking thing to we go. Only, we only wasted like five, so we're just going to cut like five. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, okay, so if you guys are looking for a, a generator to make it a bit easier for you, this guy's got it up for pay what you want. Uh, he's uh, doing this of his own accord. Um, that he uh, is suggesting maybe you donate him five dollars, but that's not even necessary. He is translating from German what to he's English. Done, I'm probably going to, but yes. Yeah, like he's uh, he's just you know he's got it on GitHub. If you are the type of guy who likes to read source code, um, like you can see what all he's putting into it. It's compatible with Linux distributions. It's compatible with Mac. It's compatible with PC, so pretty much... Also, if you're English fans out there, he's about three or four books ahead of the English releases already. Yeah. So, so. I mean, can't really go wrong. Um, the last I heard, he had, like, Blessed... He had, like, the Blessed Ones book in there, even. Actually, maybe Magic 2, because I think there's two Magic books. Yeah, so Mike the Crazy over here was thinking about uh, just trying to reverse engineer this so he can figure out what all goes into the books that haven't been released yet. But I think I'll just bide my time, as one does. I'll just bide my time. I might buy it just so it'll make it easier to create a character. But yeah. I just... that's... Well, because you can exclude the books you don't have out of it, too. Yeah. So if you don't want to, if you don't want to use, if you're not allowed to use, you know, what, what's, oh, the compendium, you just click on it and it's not in there. Yeah. Or if you don't uh, use the magic book or the whatever, you can just click that stuff off and it's not in there. There was an online character generator I was using for Pathfinder 2 that we might show you guys in a later episode because I don't feel like digging through my bookmarks right now. But um, right. It, it was one that I used a lot, not because I couldn't learn how to do it. It just it made it so much easier. And my mm. biggest problem when I was making uh, characters in Pathfinder was that I would just straight up forget to do steps. <laughs> and it made it a lot oh, easier. I forgot to add three levels worth of hit points. Yeah, yeah or it's like <laughs> uh, we we leveled eight times. Hey, Morris, did you remember to put uh, extra towards one of your core stats? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, and his yeah. modifiers were off. Yeah, he was. And you're another, a poor bookkeeper, Morris. That's all there is to it. That's fine, though. Yeah, I'm you can't all be dug. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, how he. Well, I was, that, also, I've been making characters for years upon years upon years, upon, so I'm used to it. But you know what I mean. He enjoys that crap. I'll never know. But also, <sighs> just because I've opened this bookmark by accident before. Um, so you guys uh, on crit success, just to give you another idea of what all is in those uh you got your of course d20 ring uh which you know i think that when we opened this like last it was like 20 bucks so but you yeah, got about 20 bucks each i thought they were you got uh yep 1999 uh you've got a bit pricey but i think it's interesting enough to 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 at least buy one of them, D100, you know. One hundred. You got one ring that works three D sixes. You got your alignment. You got counters. You got a playing cards ring. You know, like and and these were one of the uh, tables that we saw whenever we were at Origins. That the guys were pretty cool. And you know, I'm not seeing that Braille ring for Mike yet, but you know, maybe, maybe. it might take a while. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, just something more to eat up money. <laughs> what it'll do to me. I don't mind spending the money, honestly. If it's something I'm going to use, I don't mind. Or something I think is just really neat, There's I don't mind spending the money. So much that I, I might never use it. For. I don't mind spending the money. Yeah. 
Well, like, I, you know, I can't use paper copy books because I can't read them, but I'm still contemplating buying the leather-bound editions of 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 this game just, because I like it so much. Just you know so he I'm, can uh, stroke it every once in a while, folks. It's like, yes, yes, dark. I press it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, uh, that's... Uh, oof, jeez, it's late. But yeah, I think we finally ironed out what we wanted to get done here, folks. So Yep. That was much more productive, hopefully, than the last two. <laughs> God, I hope so. So... Because I don't want to have to do this again. There's crazy stuff in the end. Like, I've been asking you questions this whole time. Freaking write Mike an email or comment or both preferably. Because we the really... The it is, the better. That's fine we, with me. We really cause... do want to talk about sentient refrigerators was my last one. Or, you know, Scott... Why does your toaster want to... Why does my toaster want to eat me? That's fine, too. So, yeah. this is one of the things that we had to cut out, unfortunately, because it just was bad quality there. But it's like, how bad would that be? That That's something that's totally within the purview uh, of... Um, oh, late. My mind's going. Help me, Mike. What's the other system that we like? Um, oh, Shadowrun. Shadowrun. Thank you. <laughs> that's really sad. But yeah, Shadowrun, it would totally be within the purview of that, that like your girlfriend's pissed at you, so she hacks into the toaster and downloads a copy of her consciousness in it that's like just passively, aggressively burning Burns all your, your toast. Your egos and your toast are always being burnt. It's, it's like, why, why you always got to be right, honey? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But yeah questions like this and more just interact with us guys that's what we're here for yeah and it, it will, will help us feel like we're not a failure <laughs> if somebody asks Dude, you what? i don't think anybody can help me with that but if you want to talk to me you internet ask me questions <laughs> uh this is this is what i said before we gotta act oh. like you don't want it mike and you'll get more of them so Sleep deprived. That's what it is, Morris. That's, what it is. That's one word for it. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, yeah. Uh, F you too. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> Go to bed, you asshole. <laughs> you too. Later, everybody. Good night, guys. The theme music used for this podcast. Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. Hey kids, would, would you let that toast thing slide? Because I probably wouldn't. I think it would progress, you know. First off, she's burning my toast, and then she's burning my egos, and then the next thing you know, she's, she's really trying to hurt me. She's burning my toaster strudel, just for the sheer satisfaction of not letting me eat it. I mean, how did it get this bad? Why are we like this now? Could you live with that? Email your answer to Volantrix at gmail.com. That's Volantrix spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X. I mean, why would she do that to me? What kind of monster was I dating?